Hi guys, welcome to my channel, today's video about Hamilton Vegetable Chopper on Amazon. Get 35% off for this product by link in the description. This all unboxing credit goes to Best Kitchen Review YouTube channel, I'll put the channel link on description. Don't forget to subscribe my channel, to be notified about, hot deals like this. Hi guys, today I'm reviewing the Hamilton Beach Stack and Snap food processor. It measures 16 and a quarter inches tall, nine and a half inches wide, and 8.7 inches deep. The unit weighs about six and a half pounds. The base has suction feet, so it should not move around when you're using it. Before using the food processor, wash all the parts except the base in warm soapy water and dry everything. All the parts are dishwasher safe, just don't use the sandy setting of your dishwasher. The base can be wiped down with a damp cloth and dry. The length of the cord is 25 inches. I'll show you all the parts. Here's the base with the control panel. There's the on off button, slice and shred button, puree and mix, and pulse to chop. The bowl goes next. It just sits on the base, there's no turning it to lock it. This bowl holds 12 cups. The chopping board goes next, goes straight down the motor shaft. The shaft is not removable. The lid goes on next. Just line up the pour spout on the bowl with the spout on the lid. There are two plastic latches, just push them down and that locks. If you don't put the latches down, the unit won't work. If you're chopping or mixing, you would use this S-blade. To slice or shred, you would use the included reversible disc. Slice and shred are clearly marked. When you use this disc, you don't use the S-blade. The disc goes directly on the shaft, right in the middle. Then you put the lid on, lock it, put your food in the chute, and use a large food pusher to push the food down. If you're shredding slimmer food like carrots, you would use the small food pusher. When you're slicing or shredding, there is a max line on the chute, so you can't fill above that. That means you will have to cut up long produce like cucumbers. The instruction manual has a few recipes and tips on using the food processor. Let's go ahead and test out this food processor. First, I'll make a tomato salsa, put the S-blade in. I'll be processing two garlic cloves and some jalapeno pepper. When you're processing very small foods that you wanna process finely, it's best to turn the machine on, then put the food through the chute. So with the machine running, I'll put in the two garlic cloves and the jalapeno paper cut up. So I'll put the lid on, put the large food pusher into the chute. If you don't put this in, the machine's not gonna work. I'll turn the machine on to the puree mix button and with it running, I'm gonna drop in my garlic and jalapeno pepper. really decent job on the peppers and garlic. Now I'll put the rest of the ingredients in. I'm using quarter of a red onion. Generally food should be cut into about one inch pieces. Three tomatoes cut into quarters, some cilantro leaves, a little salt, and some lemon juice. Put the cover on. It takes a little bit of effort to close the latches. They're kind of hard. When you make salsa, it's best to pulse a few times to get the consistency that you want. So I'll use the pulse button. This is the consistency of a chunky salsa. The tomatoes have been chopped and so have the onions, but it's not perfect and it's not perfectly even. It's a decent job. 
Of course, you can keep going if you don't want it this chunky. Before emptying out the salsa, remember to remove the blade, otherwise it might fall into your bowl. For this price point, it's not bad at all. Next, I'll use the slicing disc. Slice goes on top. Put it in the middle. Lock down the lid. The max line is over here, so I will have to cut up my cucumber to fit it into the chute. I've cut up the cucumber, so I'm putting two pieces into the chute. Put the large food pusher in. And we'll use the shred slice button. Two more pieces. And you don't have to hold down the button, just push it and it'll just go automatically. There's only a tiny piece of cucumber on the disc. You can see the slices. They're pretty even, but you have these squares and then you have circles. So although they're thin and pretty even, um, you might get a couple of different shapes. These are done nicely. You can see they are even, but like I said, um, there are two different shapes, squares and circles and a couple of ovals. I'll use the slicing blade again to slice some green and red peppers. I'm just gonna put them straight down like this. The chute is of course not big enough to fit a whole pepper. I can fit two, so I'm gonna do two at a time. Again, we'll use the slice shred button and pulse. The peppers come just up to the max line. I'll put in two more pieces. Another green pepper. Again, that was very fast. There are just a few unprocessed pieces on the disc. Here are the peppers. They're just not even, as you can see. Here's a large piece. Here's a strange piece. The red peppers seem to have been done nicely. But there are some wide pieces. So it's not consistent at all. Here are some nice pieces. About 75% of the slices are decent and they look like they're supposed to be like this. And about 25% are wider and um, larger. So although the disc slices very quickly and evenly, the uh, shapes are gonna be all over the place. Between the handle and the chute, a food might get stuck in here and it's a little difficult to wash out. But make sure to get any of the food particles out before putting it in your dishwasher. Next, I'll use the shredding side to shred some potatoes. One thing to remember, you cannot use this food processor to grind coffee beans or spices, knead dough or crush ice. With the potatoes, you can cut a part of it off and put it in sideways or you can just cut it in half and put it um, lengthwise. I think I can only fit one piece. Put the large pusher in and press the slice shred button. Can put two pieces in there. There are a few pieces of unprocessed potato. 
There are the shredded potatoes. They look really good actually. Everything is shredded nicely. This is great for hash browns. Very nice job on the shredder. You can probably see this uh, piece of cucumber skin is still stuck in there. I will try to get that out later, maybe with a toothpick or something. But this part of the handle here is a little problematic. If food gets stuck in there, it is very hard to get out. If you have a kitchen spray, you could try to spray here with water to force the particles out or get in there with a toothpick or something small. Next, I'll shred some cheddar cheese. This is an eight ounce block. It's been refrigerated. I just took it out. Make sure your cheese is very cold. If you're shredding soft cheese, put the cheese in the freezer for 30 minutes before processing. Most food processors recommend that your cheese be very cold and hard before you shred it. It just makes it easier for the food processor to shred the cheese. I will have to cut this block in half. I'll put half the block in and press slice shred. Put my second piece in. Even with the hard cheddar, it struggled a little, it processed half, and then it started just squishing it to the side, so I kept um, letting the machine run. So you might even have to put uh, cheddar cheese in the freezer for a few minutes before processing. You can see the cheddar on the disc. Whatever is in the bowl is nicely shredded. So the shredding side of the disc works much better than the slicing side. The noise level of the unit is average. It's not too loud. So you saw how the Hamilton Beach did with the salsa, slicing and shredding. You'll have to pay two to three times more for a food processor this size that slices and processes everything evenly. So at this price point, this Hamilton Beach is not a bad option. If you want to try this unit out, I've put a link in the description below. As always, I hope you found this review useful. Subscribe and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.